In this video, let's talk about arithmetic sequences where we're going to practice writing recursive and explicit formulas. Now, remember, when we're talking about the recursive formula, this is really just the formula that helps us understand each next term based on just the previous term right before it, right? A little bit different, though, the explicit formula is going to be able to tell us the value of a specified term based on the position in the pattern. So the explicit one isn't just based on the one before it, but can kind of tell us any of the positions of any of the numbers in the sequence. Now, I totally get that just talking about these two formulas can still be really confusing, so let's try some examples together to hopefully simplify the process down. So for number one, we have the sequence of 9, 15, 21, and 27. The first thing we're going to want to do is verify that the distance between each of these numbers in the sequence is the same each time so that we know it is an arithmetic sequence. And it looks like the pattern here is that we're adding 6 for each number in the sequence, so it looks like we can go on since this is an arithmetic sequence. Since we add 6 each time, we can call the common difference here, or d for short, is going to be equal to positive 6. We also want to go ahead and identify the first number in the sequence here, so when we have this 9, we know that a sub 1 is equal to 9, or the first number in the sequence. At this point, I think we have all the information that we need to go ahead and write our recursive formula, and we want to just remember what that recursive formula is going to look like. We want to start by always knowing the first term of the sequence, or a sub 1, and we know that a sub n, or any number in the pattern, is essentially going to be the number previous in the pattern, or right before it, plus that common difference. So for this particular sequence, we're going to say a sub 1 is equal to 9, or the first number in the sequence, and then a sub n, or any number in the pattern, is going to be equal to a sub n minus 1, the previous number, plus the common difference, which in this case is going to be 6. Now, what about the explicit formula? This right here is the explicit formula for sequences. So what this says is that a sub n, or any number in the sequence, is going to be based on a sub 1, the first number in the sequence, plus n minus 1, multiplied by the common difference. And so if you were looking for the tenth number in the sequence, n would be equal to 10. So this would be the tenth number in the sequence. You would need to know 10 minus 1 equals 9. 9 times the common difference plus the first number in the sequence would equal that tenth number in the pattern or the sequence. So for this sequence, what are we going to write? We're going to write a sub n is equal to a sub 1, which you know is going to be 9. Then we're going to go ahead and add on this n minus 1, n minus 1, and multiply that by the common difference of 6 here. We could use this explicit formula to figure out any number in this sequence if we wanted to. Alrighty, so that was number one. Let's go ahead and check out a second example together. For number two, it looks like we have negative 14, then negative 17, negative 20, and negative 23. So as each of these progress, it looks like we're getting smaller and smaller. As we move from a sub 1 to a sub 2 all the way to a sub 3, if you check out that common difference here, I'm looking like I'm seeing a pattern of minus 3 each time. We're getting 3 smaller. And we also want to notice that the first number in our sequence, or a sub 1, is equal to negative 14. So for a common difference, let's say d is equal to negative 3. And then for a sub 1, or the first number in our sequence, we're going to say that's equal to negative 14. Once we establish our common difference and a sub 1, we can go ahead and write our recursive and explicit formula. So when we write our recursive formula, we just need to start off with a sub 1 and know that that's going to be negative 14 for this case. And the recursive formula here is a sub n equals a sub n minus 1, or just the number previous in the sequence. And then it's going to be plus our common difference. But in this case, that common difference is going to be this negative 3. So we're really adding negative 3. But of course, we can also just write that as minus 3 instead. Moving on to our explicit formula, this is to help us find any uh, number in the sequence. Uh, we're going to say a sub n is going to be based on what a sub 1 is, plus this n minus 1 that we had earlier as well for our other explicit example. And that's going to be multiplied by the common difference. So in this case, it's going to be multiplied by this negative 3. So I'm just going to go ahead and write times negative 3, just like this. Here's a third example. In number 3, it looks like we have uh, this first number of 23, moving on to 11. Then we have some negative numbers. We have negative 1, then negative 13. So, so looking at the pattern here, it looks like between each of these, it looks like we're going down 12, down 12, and down 12 again. So we've confirmed it is an arithmetic sequence. We have that consistent uh, common difference here. So it looks like we're going down minus 12 between each of these terms. Let's go ahead and just confirm this is an arithmetic sequence. So it looks like we're going down 12, going down 12, and going down 12. So it looks like that's the common pattern here. It looks like we're going down 12 as we go on to each next term. 
Then we wanna identify that 23 is our first term of the sequence, or that's a sub one. And so we can say that our common difference here, D is going to be this negative 12. And then we can also say that our a sub one, or the first number in our sequence is going to be 23. Just like in the last couple of examples to write our recursive and explicit formulas, those are the only two pieces of information that we need to write them. So here are those formulas again, so hopefully we can memorize uh, how they are supposed to look or we can conceptually make sense of how to build them each time. Uh, let's start with the recursive formula like we did before. A sub 1 is 23. Let's go ahead and write that. And then A sub n is going to be equal to A sub n minus 1. Again, it's a number right before A sub n. And then we're going to write plus this uh, negative 12, but just like the last time because it was negative or we were going down, we can just write minus 12 instead of adding a negative 12. So while this is the recursive formula, let's take a look at the, look at the explicit formula. Uh, for the explicit one, we have a sub n equals, then we have a sub one, which we know in this case is going to be 23. Let's go ahead and substitute that in. Plus we're gonna add this n minus one, n minus one multiplied by the common difference. In this case, the common difference here is going to be negative 12. So let's go ahead and multiply that by negative 12. All right, here's number four. In number four, we have the numbers uh, negative seven, negative two, three, and eight. From negative seven to negative two, it looks like we're going up by five. From negative two to three, it's up another five. And then three to eight, it's up another five. So it looks like our common difference here is going to be we're increasing by five or plus five each time. So we have the common difference and we can see here that negative seven is our first number in the sequence, our a sub one. So let's just go ahead and say that D is gonna be equal to a positive five. And let's also establish that a sub one here is going to equal negative seven. Again, that's all the information we need to know to go ahead and write our two formulas. And so we just really have to know what the formulas are. So for the recursive formula, we have to know a sub one, which you know is going to be negative seven. And then everything is gonna be based on uh, the previous term here. So any a sub n's are gonna be equal to a sub n minus one, the number in the sequence right before it, plus our common difference. So in this case, we're gonna be adding on a positive five because our common difference was adding five between each of those terms. And then taking a look at the explicit formula, we have a sub n, so any number in the sequence is gonna be equal to a sub one, which is negative seven in this case plus we're always going to multiply the quantity of n minus one uh, multiplied by d. And in this case, d is going to be five. So I'm gonna go ahead and just uh, put a five next to this. Feel free to put in parentheses if you want, but I'm just gonna write a five. All right, in this fifth example, let's take a look and see what is going on. We're starting off with negative 3.5, then negative two, so it's going up by 1.5. Then we have negative 0.5, so it go up, goes up by another 1.5, and then we have this one here. Looks like as we move up each time, we are increasing by 1.5. So we do have an arithmetic sequence since it's consistent. So our common difference here is gonna be adding 1.5 or plus 1.5 between each of the terms. Let's identify our common difference as well as our a sub one. So in this case, our D or common difference is going to be positive 1.5. Let's go ahead and write that. And then our a sub one or the first number in the sequence is going to be negative 3.5. At this point, we just need to know what our formulas are. So starting with the recursive formula, a sub one is going to be this negative 3.5. And then our a sub n, our recursive formula we can write is going to be equal to a sub n minus one or the previous uh, term in the sequence. And they're gonna be adding on that common difference here. So we're gonna write plus 1.5. Now for the explicit formula, we have a sub n equals, uh, and we have a sub one, which is negative 3.5. Let's go ahead and write that first. And then we're, let's see, we're gonna add on this uh, n minus one expression multiplied by d. d is going to be 1.5, so we're gonna multiply this by 1.5. All right, here's one final example. In number six, we're starting with 4.8. We're going down to 1.3, then down to negative 2.2, and then down more to negative 5.7. So let's see if this is an arithmetic sequence. Looks like we're going down 3.5 here. We're going down another 3.5, and we're moving down 3.5 more. So looks like we're moving down, so our common difference here is gonna be negative three and a half between each of these terms. So we know the common difference and we also want to know our a sub one. So for the common difference or D, we're going to say D is going to be equal to negative 3.5. That's the difference between each of these terms. And then a sub one is that first term and that's going to be equal to 4.8. Now that we have those two pieces of information, 
let's just go ahead and plug them into our formula. And so for our recursive formula, a sub one is gonna equal 4.8, and then a sub n is gonna be equal to a sub n minus one. Then we're gonna go ahead and add on that common difference of negative 3.5, or we can just write minus 3.5 instead of adding a negative 3.5. For the explicit formula, we have a sub n equals, and we're gonna start with a sub one, which is equal to 4.8. And then we're gonna go ahead and add on this n minus one, n minus one, and multiply it by our common difference. In this case, our common difference is going to be negative 3.5, so I'll put parentheses around it and say that's negative 3.5, and multiply by that common difference or d value. Alrighty, so there you have six different examples of taking an arithmetic sequence or just a pattern of numbers where it's changing by a constant rate each time where a common difference. And we went ahead and wrote two formulas to represent them. One formula was that recursive formula where you establish the first number in the pattern and then you say that each number in the pattern or sequence is just based on the previous number in the pattern, one before it, and then you add on that common difference. And then each explicit formula is basically used to help you find any number in the pattern and you can go ahead and use that formula to help you do that. So that wraps up this video on writing recursive and explicit formulas for arithmetic sequences. If you found the video helpful, please consider giving it a thumbs up and letting me know in the comment section down below. And as always, keep up the great work that you're already doing, and I'll see you in the next one.